Hi everyone! In this video, we'll explain what mobile installation tests and uninstall tests are, and we'll highlight the most common bugs that a QA engineer may encounter during installation and unsolation testing. Thank you for joining the video, and let's get started! This video is a part of the Udemy course Manual Software Testing Interview Q&A for QA. For more information, check the description or visit the website testing101.net below the video. Mobile installation tests and uninstall tests are specific types of software testing activities that focus on verifying the proper installation and removal of mobile applications on mobile devices such as smartphones and tablets. Mobile installation tests are conducted to verify that a mobile application can be successfully and correctly installed on various mobile devices and platforms, including Android and iOS. The primary goal of mobile installation tests are to ensure that the installation process is seamless, error-free, and that the mobile app is properly configured on the user's device. Key aspects tested during mobile installation tests include Proper installation of the app on the target mobile device. The mobile application consists of the installation file that need to be installed on the desired mobile device in order to launch the application. Android devices use APK files for installation. The Android package with the file extension .apk is the file format used by the Android operating system as well as a number of other Android-based operating systems for distributing and installing mobile apps, mobile games, and middleware. iOS devices use IPA files for installation. An IPA iOS App Store package is an application archive file that contains an iOS app. In simple terms, it's a file that can be installed on iOS devices and used as an application. An IPA file can be used for testing iOS applications. There are at least two ways to install applications on the device. The first is the official method from the application store, such as the App Store for iOS devices and the Google Play Store for Android devices. This method is typically used when the application is already live and available on the application stores. The APK files on the Android application and the IPA files of the iOS application are not visible to the user. To install the application, you just need to follow these steps. For iOS, open the App Store on your iOS device. Use the search function to find the app you want to install. Tap on the app's icon to view its details. Tap the Get button and then confirm your action using Face ID, Touch ID or Device Passcode after logging. The app will be downloaded and installed on your device. Once the installation is complete, you can find the app on your home screen. To install the application on Android device using official method, you should follow the next steps. Open the Google Play Store on your Android device. Use the search bar to find the app you want to install. Tap on the app's icon to view its details. Tap the Install button. The app will be downloaded and installed on your device. Once the installation is complete, you can find the app in your app drawer or on your home screen. However, during the development process, usually the application is released to the application store in the later stages of development. Therefore, developers and testers use alternative methods for installing the application on the device that are different depending on the platform. On the Android device's installation the APK file using alternative to application store method is more easier than do that with API files on iOS. In particular, on Android devices, you can upload the APK file with the application directly on the device and install it. To do that, follow next steps. Enable unknown sources in your device's settings, usually under security or applications. Navigate to the settings of the mobile device. Find security and privacy option. Find install unknown apps option of the security and privacy menu. Allow access for the device destination folder. Open the file manager on your device and navigate to the location of the APK file which was uploaded on the device. Tap the APK file to start the installation. Follow the on-screen instructions to complete the installation. The app will be downloaded and installed on your device. 
Once the installation is complete, you can find the app in your app drawer or on your home screen. By following steps to install the app directly from Android mobile device, you can easily access to the application builds and test them before releasing to the Google Play Store. But for iOS devices, these steps don't work and the tester is unable to open the file manager with the IPA file and proceed with the direct installation of the application from the iOS device. The reason for this is that the App Store is the sole and exclusive source for iOS apps that can be installed on these devices. Apple does not allow iOS users to install apps from unofficial or unauthorized sources. To test the iOS application before it goes live, developers and testers usually use the Test Flight platform. The Test Flight platform it is a platform and mobile app testing service developed by Apple for iOS and iPad OS applications. It allows developers to distribute pre-release versions of their apps to a limited group of testers for testing and feedback before they are officially released on the App Store. The Test Flight platform requires the account link to the Apple Developer Program in order to install the IPA application beside the Apple Store. Membership of Apple Developer Program includes all the tools, resources, and support you need to develop and distribute apps, including access to beta software, app services, testing tools, app analytics, and more. Usually, when you are involved in a project that requires you to test an iOS mobile app, developers invite you to the test flight platform by sending an invitation to your email or sharing a public link to the beta builds. After accepting your email or public link invitation to test the app, you will see the option to test the apps in test flight. You can install the beta app on your device, test them and can replace one with other at any time. To find more details about this platform, follow the link for the official test flight platform resource. Let's move on to the next key aspect that you need to test during mobile installation and which is 2. Verification that all required app resources, for example assets, libraries, are properly integrated. After installation is successful, you should begin by thoroughly testing the app's functionality. Interact with the app as a regular user, ensuring that it performs as expected. Pay attention to any features or components that rely on specific resources, such as images, sounds, or libraries, etc. Typically, if the application improperly installed on the mobile device, such as not all libraries were installed, it will stop with a crash after the launch or after navigation to the section with missing library. The next key aspect that you need to test during mobile installation is 3. Successful setup of app permissions and access rights. During the successful setup of app permissions and access rights, you perform testing of the following aspects of the permission setup. 1. Ensure that the app requests the necessary permissions during installation or upon first use. 2. Confirm that the app's permissions request dialogs are displayed correctly and provide clear explanations for why each permission is needed. 3. Verify that the app handles user responses to permission requests appropriately. If the user denies a permission, you check that the app gracefully handles the situation, either by providing alternative functionality or by explaining why the permission is necessary. After the application is installed, 4. Verify the app's functionality when the requested permissions are granted. The goal of this verification is to ensure that the app can access and use the requested resources, for example camera, location, contacts, and other without issues. Then you verify 5. When specific permissions are denied. During this testing ensures that the app provides an alternative user experience or clearly communicates why certain features may not work without the requested permissions. For better understanding, successful setup of app permissions and access rights aspect of mobile testing, we will prepare a real-world example a photo in this video. Let's move on to the next key aspect that you need to test during mobile installation, and which is 4. Accurate placement of app icons or shortcuts on the mobile device's home screen. Several test cases that QA engineer run during this testing includes 1. 
ensure that the app icon is consistent with the app's branding and identity, including its design, colors, or any relevant logo. 2. Check the position of the app icon on the home screen. It should be easy to locate and access, typically displayed in a prominent and easily accessible location. 3. Test the app on various devices with different screen sizes, resolutions, and orientations, portrait and landscape. Confirm that the app icon placement adapts to different device configurations. Let's move on to the next key aspect that you need to test during mobile installation, and that is 5. Compatibility with different device configurations, screen sizes, and OS versions. This aspect of mobile installation testing refers to the app's ability to function properly and provide a consistent user experience across a wide range of mobile devices, including smartphones and tablets, with diverse specifications and software environments. Of course, testing on all devices and software environments is time-consuming. Thus, usually, the customer provides a matrix of the devices on which you should perform testing. Typically, this device matrix consists of a list of platforms and devices operating system versions and browser versions. For example, perform testing only on the platform iOS Android, versions of iOS X and higher, versions of Android Y and higher, browsers Chrome or Safari. Several test cases that QA engineers run during this testing include 1. Install the app on each device in your device matrix. Ensure that the installation process runs smoothly. 2. Launch the app on each device and verify that it functions as expected without layout issues or crashes. 3. Verify that the app functions correctly on different OS versions, including the latest version or older versions that your app supports. 4. Evaluate the app's performance on various devices. Look for any performance issues such as lag or excessive battery consumption, which may be more pronounced at certain devices. 5. Test the app's layout and user interface on devices with different screen sizes and resolutions. Look for any elements that are cut off, misaligned or too small to interact with. We are reviewing key aspects tested during mobile installation tests. By conducting these tests, mobile app developers and quality assurance teams can identify and address issues related to the installation processes, helping enhance the overall quality and usability of mobile applications. Following the installation testing comes the mobile uninstall tests. Mobile uninstall tests focus on ensuring that the mobile application can be removed cleanly and completely from the mobile device without leaving any residual artifacts or causing adverse effects. The main objective of mobile uninstall tests are to confirm that the uninstallation process is straightforward, thorough, and doesn't impact the device's performance or stability. Key aspect tested during mobile uninstall tests include 1. Complete removal of app files and data. Uninstall tests ensure that when the app is removed from the mobile device, all associated files including code, data and media are thoroughly deleted. This prevents any leftover remnants that might consume storage space or cause conflicts with future installations. The next key aspect tested during mobile uninstall tests is 2. Erasure of app-related permissions and settings. During uninstallation, it's crucial to verify that any permissions granted to the app, for example camera and location, are revoked, and all app-specific settings, for example preferences and user data, are removed. This safeguards user privacy and security. For example, after uninstalling the application and trying to install it again, the user should see the first step of the requesting app permissions and settings. The next key aspect tested during mobile uninstall tests is 3. Deleting of app icons or shortcuts The uninstall test ensures that any icons or shortcuts representing the app on the device's home screen or app drawer are deleted. This keeps the user interface tidy and free from obsolete references. The issue where the icon remains on the phone screen after the deleting the application occurs quite frequently. We'll demonstrate an example of this bug later in this video. The next key aspect tested during mobile uninstall tests is 
4. Resolution of conflicts and installation issues. Anisol tests aim to identify and address any potential conflicts or issues that may arise during the uninstallation process. This includes addressing scenarios where uninstallation encounters errors or complications that might interrupt the uninstall process or make it impossible. Both installation and uninstall tests are essential for delivering a positive user experience and maintaining the integrity of the user system. Incomplete or faulty installations can lead to user frustration, while inadequate uninstallation can cause system clutter and conflicts. Let's examine the most common bugs that QA engineers may encounter during interruption testing. Example 1. The application stops after launching. Please note that all the bugs we show as examples have nothing to do with the apps we show them on and have never been reproduced on those apps. We have visualized the possible behavior of the application only in order to make the error example look more clear. Imagine a scenario where a QA engineer needs to perform installation testing for an application, such as the Yahoo application or an Android device. For this reason, the tester selects the desired hardware and software from the device matrix. For instance, a Samsung Galaxy S21 with Android operating system version 13. Then QA engineer navigates to the Google Play Market, find the Yahoo application and initiate the installation process. After the application is installed, the QA engineer navigates to the home page of the mobile device and clicks on the Yahoo icon to launch the application. The expected result is that the Yahoo application launches and then welcome screen appears for the user. However, the tester encounters the following pop-up. WhatsApp keeps stopping with its options Close App and Send Feedback. This is a typical installation process bug that may occur due to improper or incomplete installation of the required app resources, for example, assets, libraries, and various other reasons. Now let's explore the second example. Example 2. The application icon remains on the phone screen after the app fails to install. Consider a situation where a QA engineer needs to perform installation testing for an application, for example, the Instagram app or an iOS device. For this purpose, the tester selects the desired devices from the device matrix like an iPhone 12 with iOS operating system version 16. Then, QA navigates to the Apple App Store, finds the Instagram application and starts the installation process. During the installation process, the tester encounters the error message, unable to install APPS, try again later. Subsequently, the installation process automatically finishes without success, so the expected result is that the icon of the application is not displayed on the device. However, the QA engineer navigates to the home page of the device and notices the white application icon on Instagram, which was added after starting the app installation. This is a bug because the icons should not be displayed on the device if the application had not been installed. Sometimes, the icon may be removable as in the usual process of deleting the application. Press on the app icon, select the Delete option and click on it. However, there are cases when even after such removal, the icon remains on the device. In such cases, solving the problem is a bit more challenging because in order to delete the icon, you need to reset the device to factory settings, leading to the loss of all device data. Let's move on to the third example. The application launches the camera after denying its use during the installation. Imagine a scenario where a QA engineer needs to perform installation testing for an application, for instance the WhatsApp application of an Android device. For this reason, the tester selects the desired devices from the device matrix, such as a Samsung Galaxy S21 with Android operating system version 13. Then, they navigate to the Google Play Market, find the WhatsApp application, and start the installation process. After the application is installed, the QA engineer navigates to the home page of the mobile device and clicks on the WhatsApp icon to launch the application. After the welcome screen, the tester encounters the permissions pop-up. Allow WhatsApp to take pictures and record video. With options, while using the app, only this time, or don't allow. 
the QA engineer selects the Don't Allow option and proceeds with further steps to launch the application. After logging in and navigating to the home screen of the WhatsApp application, the tester finds the camera icon in the header and clicks on it. The expected result is that a permissions pop-up appears to allow the WhatsApp application to use the phone's camera. However, instead of seeing this pop-up, the camera launches within the application, even though the tester denied permission to use the camera during installation. This is a bug that affects user privacy and security and needs to be fixed in order to ensure good user experience and expected behavior of the application after setting up the permission. Now, let's move on to the first example. The application doesn't fully uninstall. Imagine that a QA engineer needs to perform an installation testing for an application, for example, the TikTok app on the iOS device. For this purpose, the tester selects the desired devices from the device matrix, such as an iPhone 12 with iOS operating system version 16. Then, QA navigates to the Apple App Store, finds the TikTok application, and starts the installation process. After the application is installed, the tester navigates to the mobile phone home screen, presses the application icon, and clicks on the Delete option. The expected result is that the application was deleted, and the TikTok icon disappears from the mobile phone screen, indicating that the application doesn't exist anymore on the device. However, the QA engineer notices that the TikTok icon remains on the mobile device home screen after deleting the TikTok application. This is a bug that might affect the installation of the application. In particular, after deleting the application and trying to install it back, instead of seeing a Get button, the QA sees an Open button indicating that the application has been installed on the device, even though it was deleted. Such case is critical because it may require resetting the device to factory settings in order to install the application on the mobile device again, resulting in the loss of all device data. That's all from our side. If there are topics that you would like to see, write a comment or question to the lecture. We hope to see you in the next video.